Islam. It's brother Elvin Israel. I know y'all used to see him. I know we got Pastor Bell. Uh, we here uh, within the bill with some Israelite brothers. And uh, we'll see see how it goes, see the edifying and and just waiting on this wonderful, wonderful bill that we finna have. From IKB, Israel Kingdom Builders. Based out of, I don't know where they're based out, but I know uh, we're here in, in Memphis. You see, it's Memphis, ain't it? What is this? This is Cordo. Cordo. Yeah, same thing. It's Cordo. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. So, uh, so nice to do. thank you for the bill. Are you ready to get it? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on, <laughs> everybody? Yeah, I already know what to expect when, when, when me and Mr. Bell get together anyway. Are we are we doing anything later tonight? Oh, what? No, I don't think so. As far as I know, by the time I get through taking that rendezvous, she's going to be out for the night. Time left. So it looks like I'm going to be on Mr. Bell's computer by myself tonight, building by myself. Mm -hmm. So like I'm going to be out there by myself, building. Oh, well, I mean, we can hang out a little bit. I got to do a little bit of work with Seth. Uh, hey, man, how, how you, you doing? doing? Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, man, how you doing? Yes, sir, I'll praise you. Same here. Hey, Becky. <laughs> Hey y'all! <laughs> I, I bet leave his own for a minute. I the phone camera. Oh man. It's cold out there. Yeah, cold out there. When I saw the snow coming, I was like, oh man. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, and I won't show. I mean, I won't show y'all faces. Y'all don't want. It. I just got to turn this off. Okay. Same here. I'm the. You know, we have doc, uh, document everything anyway. Okay. I'll pray. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if I can, uh, if we can. Uh, I have a question. If y'all have a question, I'll be getting uh, uh okay. pass the question back and forth. All okay. right. Um uh, before we begin. Uh, let me get myself together. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, you good? You good? Right. 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 Put it right there. It's no blur. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I have to I have to, I take my time on the e way out there. Cause this show was coming down, right? But, Mess my nut. Okay, uh, I knew that was about my uh, my hill later. Yeah. All right, live, y'all. Not finna see any faces, so don't ask for no faces <laughs> now. Just listen to what's being brought out. You were risking with IUIC, was that you? IUIC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, well, I was asking, did y'all congregate with them also? Right. Like, if y'all, you know, every once in a while, they usually, like, come together, like, for the thing they do when, 
out there in Costa, what, Tunica Way? Mm -hmm. They have that meeting like every year or something. Mm -hmm. I was asking, did y'all ever go to those with them? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's about all I was wondering. It lets me know what uh, dealing with whoever you congregate with pretty much shows like familiar familiarity of doctrine and stuff like that. Right, so, you was, with, are you about to say? Oh, no, me personally. Oh, I was with, uh, I started with House of Wisdom. House of Wisdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, they was pretty much, it's sort of a, a Hebrew Israelite group, but it's more about the priest to it. Priestly duties. Okay. All about priest and king, the new covenant. The new covenant. Okay. Yes, sir. It's, it's very extensive, but doc, doctrinal differences and all that stuff. And eventually, I come across Mr. Bell, and, and uh, okay. I, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. What did I like to you about Mr. Miss, Miss, Miss Bell? Oh, well, what I like the most was that he was talking under the scriptures and he could actually show everything he was saying. And in the community, in the in the in the Hebrew Israelite community itself, sometimes it's hard showing what is being said. Because in order for some things to stick, we gotta change words around. And he didn't have to do that. So then I started researching everything he was saying and it all panned out 100% of it. So I was like, yeah. And in fact, when I contacted him, I mean, I came I came with some questions with him. I, I came with some, some not debateful questions, but I came with some questions with him and he was able to show me and show me. And I was like, this is it. This, this is it. Really? Okay. Uh, y'all man, y'all face being shown. Nah, man, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. Okay. Could you? Uh, uh, first of all, Pastor, I want to thank you, man. Uh, I uh, I've had uh several debates with uh uh with uh with uh men in leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pastor Steve Young, I have a debate on my on my page with him. He was uh. Uh, uh, gracious enough to, you know, uh, uh, give us a a platform to uh, to uh, to dialogue, and uh, I give all praise to him. You know, I was uh, a part of that ministry, and uh, you know, and many other men and women. Uh, in the gospel, okay. and uh, we uh, had a good time in scripture, a very adult uh, situation, uh, adult talk, and uh, how I found out about Pastor Bell, uh, I seen a YouTube uh, debate between him and Cesario, and uh, I was very interesting, I mean, that was, you know, amazing. Uh, Learned a lot from both sides, and uh, and just to clarify some things, how I came into the truth, um, I was uh, I've been in church all my life, like most of us can uh, uh, agree with that. Right. You know, been in church all my life. You know, I uh, held many positions in the church, from pastor to deacon to minister to right. uh, choir director. You know, anything that would help out uh, the leadership. Mm -hmm of the church and at the same time studying, you know, wanting a better relationship with God, wanting to see God, wanting this to be the opportunity for me to take care of of, uh, of earthly matters on this side, because I know there's no second chance once this is over. So it was very important for me uh, to, um, to, uh, to make sure I had it right and correct. Uh, so that's what led me on my journey. Brother brought me, and uh, it actually started off with Christ's name. Uh, long story short, you know, understand there are no J's in the Hebrew language. It, it actually started right there, and I began to read. And the scripture became more enlightened to me. Now I understand about the blindness being removed. Right. Because as I was preaching for years behind the full pit, preaching to people, you know, in the church, and then all of a sudden, I'm looking at the same Bible I've been holding all my life, and I begin to see what the I missed that, and uh, it just it just put me on a 
put me on a whole nother, you know, arena uh, to seek God, to ask for knowledge, he'll give it, to seek him now, find, to knock and that door will be open. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he has truly blessed me. And uh, I had to go on YouTube and other other way, or other or social media program and offer an apology uh, to the people who I was speaking to right. of that so-called coming days, because I've created a lot of, I believe now, falsehood. Absolutely. Uh, and made a man-made doctrine. Absolutely. And uh, I say that uh, leading me to a question that I want to uh, pose to you guys. Oh, can, can you uh, tell them uh, your name on Facebook? Uh, my name first? is Manuel Tabor. I go by Kael Ben Israel. Now, um, I, reject, I rejected the name of of my so-called uh, captain. You all okay, understand yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. My name is Moshe. Okay, then, and they're just going to type that in if they want to follow you or something? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, what um, church were you associated with? I was associated with many churches, and that's one of the issues, too. Right. You know, church hopping. We always, we do a lot of church hopping. We can't, you know, that shows the, 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 uh, um, uh, the error, if I can say, in the doctrine of this world. Okay. Because Christ said he is the truth, he's the way, and he is the life. No man can come to the Father but by Christ. Mm -hmm. And for us to go from church to church, and we know fact that that, that the church has many doctrines. And and and, and right. not the question I'm posing right now, but like I said. You know, uh, if Christ came back right now, what denomination would he come back for? If Christ come back right now, you know, and I understand the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, and I don't want to tell you what you believe. I want to ask you what you believe okay, before right. we start this here off. Uh, but uh, it's many doctrines in the world, many doctrines, many beliefs. And, and the question would be posed if Christ uh, came back today, what church, what denomination, what what body would he come back for? Uh, we have Jehovah's Witnesses, we have Islam, we have Buddhism, we have we have Seventh Day Adventists, we have um, uh, so many sets of 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 of, of doctrine out there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and at one time or another, these doctors, these churches, these organizations have held in their position these scriptures. Absolutely. You know, so we have an issue with that. We have a a, a real problem with that uh, when we take that doctrine and we compare it to what God is saying. Because it's very important. Uh, I know you guys, too, are very concerned about what the Bible is saying, what God is saying, mm -hmm. because he's the last authority. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. So my question would be to you all, well, I have two questions. First question is, what do you believe? What do you ascribe to? Subscribe. You want, to, you want to take that? I can, I can just go ahead. I can sum it up real fast. And go, ahead. Can go ahead after that. Uh, everything in the Bible has been fulfilled already, and we are in the kingdom age. We're in the kingdom age. Could you explain that? Right. Okay. Um, let me just preface that with saying that um, we believe the Bible is the inspired word of God. I know I do. I believe he does as well, that it's all authoritative, that it pertains everything or contains everything that pertains to life and godliness and that uh, we have every sp spiritual blessing in the scriptures okay. um now in terms of the kingdom age in matthew 25 and verse 34 jesus tells the uh, those who are involved in that judgment he says inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world so that shows that the kingdom was something that was in the mind of God from the very beginning. And then we find in, uh, I'll just try to make this short, because uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7, uh, the scripture talks about the kingdom being established. Do y'all care if we read in this? Like, oh, come on, go ahead. I, I want to go ahead. ahead. Okay, okay. So, all right, sure. Okay. So it's Isaiah what now? Isaiah 9 and 7. All right, Isaiah 9 and 7. Mm -hmm. And can I hit that uh, Matthew 25 first that you quoted? Yeah, go ahead. It's Matthew 25 and 34, right? Yes. And I'm just going to be reading from the uh, New King James Version Bible. Uh, do y'all have a problem with that or do y'all want me to read for the KJ? I mean, it is an issue, but, you know, we're not going to, you know, of course, anything. We deal with the 1611 King James right. Bible or even if you don't have a 1611, 
we did with the uh, standard uh, standard uh, eyes uh, 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 King James version. Okay, right. So not it, it like, you about to get the King James version. So not right. new, no, not for the most part. It's just you know when we get to certain words, we we'll okay. have to look them up. Okay. Absolutely, and, and that's the reason why we do that. Can I yeah, borrow well, one of y'all? Yeah. Dude, can I borrow one of y'all KJV? Because I only got an I only got a new King James yeah. version on me. We got one. Dude. You, 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 you. Thank you. Now. All right, I'm going to return it just back like I got it, my brother. <laughs> All right, so Matthew 25, 34, right? Mm-hmm. Matthew 25, 34. Mm-hmm. And it says, Verily I say unto you. Hold on, that's all. That's 24. Matthew 25, 34. Okay. It says, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So that's the first one he quoted. Okay. And then he said Isaiah. Mm-hmm. What was Isaiah? 9 and 7. Isaiah 9 and 7. One second. Isaiah 9 and 7. Isaiah 9 and 7 says. Uh, can you give me. Uh, I need. Uh, can you give me. Uh, this, 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 uh, I forgot to do it. Uh, but, okay. uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay. Now that text is quoted in Luke chapter 1, 32 and 33. Okay. All right. I don't have to pull that door. Okay. Okay. So it's quoted in Luke 1, 32 and 33. Um, announcing that um, this prophecy is being fulfilled. So when Jesus and John, when John first, and then the Lord begins their ministry, they begin with the announcement that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, has drawn near. So you have Matthew three, verses one and two, Matthew four, verse 17, these are all similar texts. And then Mark one, 14 and 15. So we can just take one of those passages. Right. Let's take the Mark 1, 14 and 15. Okay. But I'll quote the other two and so you can note them down. Okay. Um, Matthew 3 says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand or has drawn near. Mm-hmm. So here's John in the first century teaching that the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Okay. that it was at hand. The word at hand means imminent. It means something that's close by. Then you have Matthew four seventeen that basically says the same thing. Okay. All right, now when you look at Mark's gospel, Mark will say, after John had been cast into prison, Jesus came into Galilee and uh, preached saying, go okay, ahead. Okay, uh, Mark 1, 14 to 15. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay. Okay. So when he said the time is fulfilled, he's referring back to the prophecy of Daniel. The word time there in the Greek is the word kairos and it means an appointed time. Okay. Uh, In Daniel 12 and verse 1, for example, the word appointed is used four times in that one passage, but it's also used in Daniel 9, 27 and other passages in Daniel to talk about the time of the end. So the Lord said that the appointed time is fulfilled. That's another important word uh, because it is the word originally, I mean, the uh, the base word is pleroma, but it's a form of the word which is in the perfect tense. It's peplerotai. And... It means that that time has come and stands fulfilled as an existing fact. In other words, there is no time in the future 
that was going to fulfill that appointed time. Mm -hmm. That time had arrived. So he's telling the people, the time that Daniel spoke about mm -hmm. is now here. Mm -hmm. Even his coming was in the appointed time because he said in Galatians 4 and verse 4, but when the fullness of the time was come, mm -hmm. God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. And that's a reference to Jesus' coming in the world. And we all know that he came in the first century. Mm -hmm. And again, in Ephesians 1 and verse 10, he says that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things which are in Christ Jesus, both which are in heaven uh, and which are on earth, even in him. So that appointed time for the kingdom to arrive was announced by John as at hand, was announced by the Lord as at hand mm -hmm. in the first century. And that was an appointed time, just like there were appointed festivals that had to take place at certain times. Okay. This was the time for the kingdom to come. Okay. Now, did it in fact come in the first century? Since Jesus um, affirmed and stated that it had drawn near. Mm -hmm. Either we have to accept his words or we have to say that he he's, he's, did not teach the truth or something's wrong with the Bibles that we're reading. Mm -hmm. Now, here's his statement to assure us that the kingdom did in fact arrive. I want you to get Matthew 16, 27 and 28. Okay. Matthew 16, 27 and 28 says, for the Son of Man, well, I want to start with 24, just, just the beginning. That's fine. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples. Just want to know that he's talking to the disciples here. So then said Jesus unto his disciples. Then I'm going to go to verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, so there you have the text. As a matter of fact, in, in verse 27, he uses a word mellow in the Greek, which means about to when it's used with the present infinitive. And so what the text actually says in verse 27 is, for the Son of Man is about to come. Mm -hmm in the glory of his father with his angels. And then he would reward each according to his work. Uh, he says, assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here. So they were in the presence of Christ at that time when he was on earth. And he says, there are some of you standing here who will not taste death. They would not die until they saw the son of man coming in his kingdom. Now, I'd like to read that same text out of Mark, verse 838 and 91, and then I'll make a comment and then I'll turn it back over to you. If you with Mark 8? Yeah, Mark 838 mm -hmm. and uh, 91. Now, he's going to identify the generation in which that was going to take place, but he's going to word the next verse slightly different as well, and it's, it's important to note the nuance there. Go ahead. All right, Mark 838 through 91. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels and he said unto them verily i say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of god Come with power. Okay, so in that text, he and that was Mark, uh, uh, Mark eight thirty eight through nine one. All right, at, at the eight thirty eight nine uh, chapter nine coming in. Yeah, so uh, eight thirty eight and nine one. Now, what you, the reason it's in two different chapters is because when they divided the Bible into chapters and verses, sometimes they arbitrarily split up uh, c context, and uh, so as you, if you look at the same text in. <coughs> Matthew 16, 27, and 28, and Luke 9, 26, and 27, you'll see that there's no chapter division there. Mm -hmm. So there really shouldn't be one here between verse 38 and 9, 1, because they're talking about the same thing. But what the Lord was saying was that those who were in that adulterous and sinful generation, okay. now that's the same generation that he identified in Matthew chapter 12 when 
the uh, scribes and the Pharisees came to him demanding a sign. They said, Master, we would see a sign from you. And he says, there will no sign be given to it, Absolutely. but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And right. he referred to them as, an, he said, this adulterous and sinful generation seeks after a sign. And so he says, no sign will be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Okay. So Jesus was telling them, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise in three days. That's your sign. And he was saying that to the people who were present in that day. Okay. And uh, so this is the same adulterous and sinful generation. As a matter of fact, it's the one that Moses talked about in Deuteronomy 32, verse five and verse 20. And so he says, um, uh, this is when the son of man would, would come in the glory of his father and his angels within that adulterous and sinful generation. And then he reiterates in verse one of chapter nine by saying, assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste that till they see. Now, this text, if you look in the original, is actually saying till they have seen the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of God would have come and they would still be living on earth so that they could see it as an accomplished fact. But he says that would happen before some of them died. And now we know, well, number one, that the Lord cannot lie. And number two, we know that there's no one who is still alive on this earth that was present in the first century. And if those two things are true, then the kingdom has in fact come. Okay, so what you're saying, let me get it clear. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase what you're saying here, that everything basically that the prophets and the minor prophets spoke um, has been fulfilled correct. in the first century, which would be around 78 years. That's right, correct. In the, in the area. That is okay, correct. and then that by that being fulfilled, uh, there are still some or or different generations um, being. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. Um, after Christ came in 70 AD, that everything was fulfilled, and then after that time, there are still people on the earth. Yes. Waiting for or still people on earth to witness the proof. Yes. Of his common and all the things he did. Yes. Be, be, yes, because so, the proof that he would come in his kingdom okay. was the destruction of the temple. Mm -hmm. And that's what he told them. Okay. In Luke 21, <coughs> verse 20 through 22, he says, When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. Oh, let, me, let me just go, okay, let me go, go ahead. ahead all right. Let me go ahead and read it because this is a, a powerful text. So you said Luke 21. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just want me to read 20 through 22. Right? Yeah, we're going to read that and then we're going to go down and we're going to read verse 20, uh, verse 31, and then verse 32. You want me to skip verse 27? You can read it. It's okay. It's okay. All right. All right. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Okay. Now those days of vengeance is what's quoted in Deuteronomy okay. chapter 20, I mean chapter 32. Okay, um, now he's reading from Luke. He's uh, reading Luke from Luke. Luke 21. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So when the Lord talks about the days of vengeance, he had, that had already been prophesied by Moses for Israel's last days. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 31, 29, Moses calls Israel together to tell them what was going to happen in the last days and okay. said they would become utterly corrupt, et cetera, after his death. Okay. And so chapter 32 is the song of Moses. And in that chapter, he talks about the time of vengeance in both Deuteronomy 32, I think around verse 35, but also in verse 43. He was going to avenge the blood of his servants. Okay. And so this day of vengeance that fulfills all the prophets is that which Jesus is speaking about in uh, Deuteronomy, I mean, excuse me, in Luke, when he says, these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Okay. Now in verse, go ahead, do you have uh, something to say? Oh, no, I could have got that uh, Deuteronomy 30 or uh, two if y'all needed to. No, it's not okay. 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 Right. Now, in verse, say, come back here. Yeah. Okay. In verse twenty-seven, yeah. that's the one you wanted to read. Yes, so go sir. ahead and read. Yes, sir. And now, this is the same context of Luke, which is the destruction of Jerusalem. This is the same 
context of Matthew 24, same okay. context of, Ma of Mark 13. Okay. So we're just going to read a few more verses in it so you can see what the conclusion is as well. Okay. Uh, Luke 21 and 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So that's the second comma. So now uh, I have a question. Just keep reading. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is that literal? Or is that, is that literal? Literal? Or is that spiritual? Okay. What you right. It's a very good question. Um, this is a, 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 what we would call an apocalyptic. So from that sense, you could call it figurative in that sense. But I take spiritual things to be just as literal as physical things. Okay. okay. In other words, God is spirit, right? Okay. But he's literal. He's real. Right. Okay. So when we say that, uh, it's not to say that it's not real. It is real. But did it, was this a, like a cumulus cloud that we see in the sky? Right. No, no, it wasn't that kind of cloud. Okay. And the Bible uses apocalyptic language to describe the presence of God. Okay. And, uh, and we've got examples of that in the Old Testament. And there are examples in the New Testament to demonstrate what the cloud coming of the Lord is. For example, there's one in Isaiah 19 and verse 1, mm -hmm. where it talks about the Lord will ride upon a swift cloud and come into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that was the time when Egypt was being destroyed, but it wasn't a time, it wasn't a literal coming of, of uh, the Lord on a cloud. He didn't come uh, physically, if you please, mm -hmm. on a cloud. But that is called the cloud coming. It's a presence of God. Clouds symbolize judgment. They symbolize the presence of God. And that's one what, question. Uh -huh. Okay. In the same in the same arena, mm -hmm. um, at Mount Sinai, after they had been led out of yes, Egypt, yes. and they went to Mount Sinai exactly. to receive the, the, uh, yeah. the a Torah. Yes. Um, was that literal? That particular cloud where it says that the Lord, you know, uh, followed them in the cloud, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera left them by the cloud. And then when, when he looked through the cloud from the back, the Egyptians died. That particular cloud, I would understand it to be a literal okay. cloud. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why you have types and shadows and where you have uh, these things is because based on literal things, mm -hmm. you can derive metaphors and figurative language. Okay. For example, if you talk about uh, a beast, mm -hmm. Well, there are real beasts, right? Right. And then at the same time, the Bible will call men beasts. I understand that. Okay. Perfect. I understand that perfectly. Okay. okay. Are, you, are, you, are you done with it? Uh, well, I, we, I still had, yeah, had a few more things I wanted to read. Uh, Luke 21, did you say uh, 31 and 32? Uh, or just 32? Well, you can go ahead and read uh, 28 through the end. Just okay, read, okay, read the okay, 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 okay. I can't just believe it. Okay, okay. All right. right. I'm going to start at 27 again okay. and read all the way down. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and you know of your own selves that summer is now not at hand. Verse 31. So likewise ye when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verse 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why we know that it wasn't a physical presence uh, because the text tells you that it would happen in that generation. And um, he says that they would see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. We have to identify the audience who was there. And if you look at all four accounts, it was Peter, uh, James, John, and Andrew, mm -hmm. meaning that there were people in the first century. Mm -hmm. And so he tells them, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, mm -hmm. for your redemption draws near. That's another use okay, of the redemption. term. Okay, now I like that word redemption. Yes. Okay, in, in, in dealing with the fulfillment of all things, you have a word redemption. Yes. So when at that time was Israel redeemed? This is it. He's telling you right here. Okay, so, were, so Israel was redeemed. From your understanding, Israel was redeemed yes. in 70 AD. That's correct. Right? Okay. That's correct. And so he says, then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. 
So now he's just giving him another illustration of how they are able to recognize something that was soon to take place. Okay. Because he tells them, you know, when when the uh, when it's already budding, and you see and know for yourselves that the summer is near. And so he says, in the same manner, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Okay. And therefore, he concludes that by saying, assuredly, I say to you, this generation. So again, talking about that particular generation in which they were living mm -hmm. will by no means mm -hmm. pass away till all these things take place. So there's nothing in the chapter mm -hmm. that we can take out from that statement. Mm -hmm. It covers all of the things that he spoke about. Okay. That's it on this? That's it. Okay. Now, um, I want to go back to that after... Uh, a question and a statement I want to make. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to go back to that. So, so you're in Luke right now? Uh, Luke 21. Luke 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is the issue mm -hmm. that we have. Now, you know, when we begin, you know, our study, we was talking about that we have the lives of of millions of people at stake. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, and we have different doctrines and different sects around this whole world. Right. right? Somebody, uh, Christ said there's only one truth. That's right? correct. There's right. only one God right. in this earth. Right. So somebody has to be wrong. Right. Correct. Somebody has to be right. Absolutely. Okay, now here's my question. Uh well no, here's my well, I just made my statement uh, about about many uh different organizations of the world, uh with different names on these organizations, and all are are, are are holding this book, the Bible, whether mm -hmm. it's the King James Version or, or whatever it is, right, right. It's, it's the Word of God. Absolutely. Okay. Give me Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Uh, now, what we obtain to, we believe through the scriptures, not from man, but we believe from God Himself and through the scriptures, His Word, that we are the biblical Israelites mm -hmm. that the Bible speaks of. And we can prove that, we will prove that uh, as we progress, but I want to deal with something before we even go any further. Right. Uh, and I feel that we shouldn't even touch uh, other beliefs and other belief systems uh, until we uh, until we can answer this question um, or deal with this question and deal with the scripture um, as it pertains to the law of God yeah, and, and this Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, now my question would be and we're going to read first read that, read that, read that. Read it's that. Psalms 147 verse 19. Read. He showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his word his word, this Bible these scriptures, he showed his word to Jacob. We know Jacob's name got changed to Israel. He wrestled with an angel. He prevailed against the angel. His name was changed to Israel. Israel simply means prince of the power. Mm -hmm. God is just a title. So God is not his name. It's a title of his name. Right. Moses acting his name. His name is the great I am. Absolutely. So he, this word, the Bible says that he gave his word. He gave his scriptures to Jacob. Jacob. Read. His statutes and his judgment. The statutes and the judgment are the penalties for breaking these uh the judgment are mm -hmm. the penalty for breaking the statue and this word. Read. Right. Unto Israel. Unto Israel. To the prince of the power. We know that was Jacob descending the physical seed of Israel. Right. Read. He have not dealt so. Now the Bible says not. Not. He has not dealt so. Read. With any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. What he's simply saying is the way in which he dealt with Israel. He has not dealt so in that shape, form, and fashion right. with any nation on planet Earth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Read. And as far as his, and as far as his judgment, and as far as God's judgment or the penalties for breaking the law of God, they have not known. They this. have no idea of what God is doing and what God is saying. So my question would be: Here's my question. My question would be: How did? Before we get into other doctrines in, in, in our study, right. we, we must clarify something. Okay. Right. How did the other nations of the world, besides Israel, right. how did the Gentiles get these scriptures? How did they get the word of God when it was given only to Jacob and Israel? How did the nations of the world get these scriptures? Because I believe that's how we got so many other doctrines because it's in the wrong hands. 
So my question again would be, how did the world, how did the other nations, how did the Gentile, how did non, non-Israelite right. get these texts? Right. And now they're able to instruct the masses in these texts when God says in um uh, um uh, uh in Psalm 40, uh, 47, 20. maybe in 20, yep. that he only that God gave right. only to Jacob and Israel. I wanna, I wanna, and I wanna lock that scripture That's right. in the back of it with a statement in Malachi 3, verse 6. Let's get there real quick. We have to deal with this before we can even move any further because it's very important that we understand the nature of God, the character of God, because to know God, the Bible says we must keep his commandments. Right. And in order, and when you keep his commandments, you get a clear understanding of what God is saying. We don't want to, you know, you know, so I, so if we can deal with that question, read right. this real quick. You're going to be locked and key for that. It's Malachi chapter two, verse four, chapter two, chapter three, verse six. Read that. For I am the Lord, I change not. Now God is speaking. He says, I am the Lord, I change, change not. not. Okay, right? Read. Therefore, ye freeze with the father when the father says in Malachi three, verse, hey, Jackie, um, Hey, brother uh, Malachi, he agreed with his father when he says that I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Right. Let's deal with that. Uh, if you can answer that question, brother. Uh, 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 all right. Can I, can I say something first? Go ahead. All right, then. Dealing with, um, you brought out Psalms, it was 147, 147 verse 19. 19 and 20. 20. All right, so he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Which, first of all, we got to understand right off the bat, Jacob was not the only people to receive statues as well as just, well, statues from the Most High or commandments. Jacob was not the first one. Could you clarify it? Could have right. All right, and uh, Genesis 25 and nine, sorry, 26. And five, mm -hmm. because then Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. This is before Jacob. Now we can't deal with that. That's tricky. We can't deal with that. Well, I'm, because I'm, the Bible says that God chose Abraham. Now I understand that Abraham was a Gentile by right. definition Absolutely. before he received the promise, right? Because his name was Abram, right? When he received the promise and obeyed God, his name had changed from Abram to Abraham. Right. In the father of many nations. Absolutely. That promise that he received from God was going to be an everlasting covenant. That his seed, 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 would inherit this promise. And that promise, Abraham did not receive the promise in his age. Right. In his generation. So he didn't see the land. He didn't, up, he didn't obtain the land. No. He passed it on down to his son, Isaac. Isaac didn't receive it. No. Isaac believed his father that God gave him the message. He passed it on down to Jacob. Jacob received it. Jacob didn't see it. Jacob then got changed to Israel. He paid him out to his son. His son sojourned with, with Moses. Moses saw the land and walked into the land. Right. Uh, Joshua was the only one who actually walked the children of Israel into the promise that he thereby gave to Abraham. So we cannot use that argument because Abraham still would be sim Abraham still would be in the category of Israel and Jacob. Okay, so now. So what I'm saying is clearly, I want to make it clear. Absolutely. What, at what time in history, in these scriptures, did God go against his word in dealing with other nations, Gentiles, okay. in, giving, in dealing with them with the word, with the law, with the statutes, and with the judgment? Right. Okay, so now, what we're reading in Psalms, we're reading under Mosaic covenant. What we read in Genesis, we read under Abraham's covenant. And then we also got Noah's covenant. And Explain Noah, that one. Right. Well, Noah's covenant. Mm -hmm. What did you just say? You said Abraham's you said covenant? The Mosaic covenant? Right, right. This is the, Mosaic, what we're the Mosaic covenant consists right. of the Torah. Right. The law of statutes and commandments. The Pentateuch. Right. Which is the first five books of the Bible. Correct. So you can't include Psalm. Well, this is David right here. That's David. Right. But that's not a part of the Mosaic. Well, quote unquote, Mosaic law. It would be the penalty in my right path. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the prophets taught something different than what was in the law? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely All right. Not. Then. But what I'm saying, if you go, we have to stay one, two, three, A, and C. Absolutely. We have, to, we have to deal with with what Scripture says. All right. Let, let me let me respond to that. All right. When you read Luke 24, 
-hmm. 44 through 47. When Jesus talked about fulfilling the promises and um, opening the hearts of the disciples so that they could understand the things that he said, the scripture says he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he spoke to them out of the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. In other words, there is a consistent um, thread of truth that runs through all of them. I agree. Now, the point that was being made, um, for example, if you were to go to Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says that um, to Abraham and to his seed, singular. Mm -hmm. Meaning Christ. Meaning Christ. Mm -hmm. Not meaning the whole nation. Absolutely. I agree. To Abraham and to his seed mm -hmm. were the promises made. Mm -hmm. He says, not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. And he says, and the law, which was 430 years after, cannot annul the promise that he made before. So the Torah does not annul the promise. The promise and the Torah are not the same. The Bible says, hold on a second. The Bible says if, the, uh, if there had been a law which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. That's Galatians chapter three and verse 18. And um, uh, in Romans chapter four, he tells you that the, the promise that Abraham would be heir of the world was not to his seed uh, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So we have to make that distinction. That's the whole point of the fact that God spoke to Abraham while his name was Abram. Mm -hmm. See, the promise that he made to Abram mm -hmm. is found in Genesis 12 and verse 3 Absolutely. that says, and in your seed shall all families of the earth shall be blessed. And uh, because you have, a uh, well, that's, a, that's another text, but uh, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Now in Galatians chapter 3, and the verses eight, the Bible says in the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations through faith, preach before the gospel to Abraham, saying in you, all families of the earth should be blessed. So what we have is a promise that was made to Abram prior to Moses, 430 years before Moses, that is not the law. There is a difference between the promise and the law. Now, the promise that he gave was the promise of Christ because it was the seed. That's what we established. That promise was given to Adam as well in Genesis 3 and verse 15. After Adam sinned, that's the same proto-evangelicum that we have right there in the very beginning. So, and it's, it's the same promise. It's the promise of life from the dead. Now, we just saw from Galatians chapter 3 that um, uh, if there could have been a law which could have given life Truly, righteousness would have been by the law. Okay. So Galatians three twenty one says, "There's not." I want to add one. Well, I want to ask a question. Go ahead. All right. Well, 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 I, I would, let me say one quick thing right. because okay. yeah, yeah, I'm going to get off the topic. All right. Uh, okay. The promise and the law. Mm -hmm. Now you're right, but there is a distinction when you say law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have the sacrificial law. Mm -hmm. And we have the, the, we're going to put it this way. There are five parts of the Mosaic law. Okay. Right. Dietary law, okay. sacrificial law. We have a ceremonial law, a mm -hmm. judicial law. Mm -hmm. And what's the last one? Uh, ceremonial. Ceremonial law. Y'all say ceremonial? Yes. Yes. Ceremonial, ceremonial judicial. judicial. Um, judicial, we have ceremonial, judicial, moral. Mm -hmm. We have sacrificial. And we have dietary law. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's saying that the law uh, 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 could not bring forth a promise or make a man perfect or clean a man. Right. He's not speaking of the moral, the sacrificial, right. the judicial, nor is he speaking of the uh, ceremonial. Ceremony. He's speaking of the sacrificial Fisher. law because the sacrificial law, okay. as we that. as we understand, okay. as we understand the sacrificial law, when we deal with the sacrificial law. The sacrificial law, just like we read in Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, were the judgments, right? right? So the judgments of God or the sacrifices that they were offering, even in Isaiah and Jeremiah, God got sick of Israel offering these uh, sacrifices because they, 
weren't bringing pure lambs and pure sheep and doves. Right. They were bringing stuff with blemishes. Okay. So we're dealing with the sacrificial law because that's where the blood would be shed because there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Right. So, so let me just have to, let me, have let to me interrupt to, to clarify it. basically what your, your main uh, premise is. Is it your premise then that it was the sacrificial law that was removed and the rest of the laws remained? Is that where you're well, going? Well, that's what you're going to with Abraham because Abraham obeyed God. I said again, Abraham obeyed God. Who? Abraham. He obeyed him. True. Now, when but Abraham, that was before the law, right? That we're speaking of in Galatians 3. Right. He obeyed God. So we cannot do away with uh, uh, the law of God. We have to make a clear distinction between the law of God, which is the obedience, and make a distinction between the other part of the law, which is the judgment for breaking these laws. So Abraham was obedient to God, was going to But here's my question. I want to make sure I'm clear on this. Okay. Are you saying then that at the time of Abraham, they had the... Uh, the dietary laws and the sacrificial laws and the judicial laws and the ceremonial laws. I'm not saying that. Not at all. Okay. But what right. I am saying, even, I'm going to be going with you, right. because there wasn't a law in stone even in Noah's day. But Noah knew to take seven clean and two unclean. He understood that. So we understand that the sun, the moon, and every all the wind and everything, everything that's outside, even in here, gravity and everything, is a form of law. Okay. So right. we cannot do away with law. No, and I'm not God, suggesting that you do away God with law. But what God can do, he can do away with the sacrifice as an yes. example to Abraham and Isaac. Now that I have a perfect sacrifice, he's concentrating on him obeying God and thereby having the perfect sacrifice, which is in Christ. Okay. So okay. when you're speaking of Galatians and dealing with the sacrifices that it cannot disannul the promise, you are dealing with Abraham and the sacrifice that Abraham okay, was got you. not with the obedience right. that he took your son because that's what that's solid. We have to deal with right. in the first question of the in in Psalms 127, okay. 19 and 20. We must deal with the sacrifice because that's the problem. Okay, all right. So the, the premise is that. Basically, it's the sacrifices done that's done away with. Oh, do you agree? I, no, I, I, absolutely all right, not. All right, I don't all right. Agree. Okay, no, no, no. no. Right. Before we get too deep in, <laughs> I still want you to answer you all to answer. Absolutely. 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 Right. Absolutely. We right. question right. how did the nation right. okay. get the Bible right. and the law of God? Right. Well, right. so right. this is why I want to understand. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead no, I, I mean, I just didn't understand this. So are we saying that in Psalms, Psalms wasn't written during the the institution lies or the institution of the Mosaic Covenant? Well, we're saying it's clear. Right. We're saying clearly is there is a clear distinction between the Pentateuch or the Torah right. Right, and the Tanakh. Right. Because right. the Tanakh is all of it. That, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a clear divide. Right. It's a clear, I know what the Torah is. Right. I know what it right. is that we wrote right. it. But that's what I'm saying clearly. Right. That when you say, when you tell me that songs is of the Torah, Torah. That's incorrect. Absolutely. No, I, well, I said Mosaic Covenant. Even when you say Mosaic Covenant, even when you say Mosaic Covenant, you're in error. Absolutely. Well, who wrote, say that? who wrote, didn't David write Well, songs? David wrote some. And wasn't David under the Mosaic Covenant? He was under the Mosaic Covenant, but we don't count, as pastor understand, we can't count the minor prophets as, as in the Torah. There are two different, there are two different, uh, 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 I'm going to word you, but they are different. We have to make a distinction it's between it's the two. It's it's right. It's right. right. I want you to have this. Story. Okay. Yeah, I want you to explain this. All right. <laughs> See, my understanding is that the while you have the books categorized as the law, the prophets were nothing. You, you might call them um, uh, attorneys, if you please, okay. for the Torah. They okay. didn't teach anything other than the Torah. Absolutely. And so... I understand where you coming from. Okay. But well, now, let's get down to the brass. Hold on, hold on. I understand where you're coming from. Go ahead. So, the Torah right. itself, the first five books, mm -hmm. has several covenants within that first five books. Absolutely. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. Abraham had his own covenant. It was Abraham's covenant. 
That, that wasn't Mosaic Covenant. That's right. And in his covenant, he had all statutes and commandments. That's well, the only way you say is the Mosaic Covenant, you know, um, you know, you want to be intelligent about it. The only way you would say is the Mosaic Covenant is because um, of the commandments, of 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 because Moses um, wrote that down. If you would, if you would, because Moses subscribed to that, or he published like King James. That's why you subscribe Moses to the Torah right. or to the Mosaic Law right. because Moses wrote that with his hand. He, put or, or, he right. published it. Right, he published it. So I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying in regard to Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, you cannot, it would be it would be a error to say that Psalm is of the Mosaic Covenant and trying to merge it to you can't do that. Okay, what covenant is Psalms under then? Psalm, Psalms. Or, or David. Yeah, what, what covenant is that up under? It's, awesome. um, it's under the whole entire Bible. It's under the, the Bible, but it's found in the Tanakh. Uh, uh, so you know are saying? we saying that there's no covenants? We don't want to we don't want to deter from the question. Right, right. I'm asking. Okay, pick, look. Pick, pick, pick. All right, hold on. We got we got we got Adam's covenant. Go. Then we got Noah's covenant. Then we got Abraham's covenant. We got Isaac's covenant. Well, there's only one we covenant. Got, what? There's only one covenant. Right. There's only one covenant. We got now. Now, if you want, if you want to get technical, you yes, go. no, I did have a covenant. Right. I'm gonna flood the earth. I have an agreement. A covenant is simply an agreement. I have a, I'm but, but flood the earth. I'm simply saying it was rules and regulations in that I, covenant. I understand what you're saying, but what the Bible is saying in Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, he says the word was given to Jacob. Jacob. The law, statute, commandment. Right. To Wait a minute. Israel. Let me let me ask a question. Okay, go ahead, so go ahead, you're go ahead, quoting go from the Psalm that you say is not the Torah. In order to establish your point of the Torah, all I'm saying that's, that's a little bit inconsistent. All I'm saying, I understand what you're doing. Yeah. But, all I'm saying is simple. Yeah. Let, me, let me make a point. All I'm saying is, you know, we don't want to defer from the question. All I'm yep. saying is, in Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, when did the other nation, who are Gentiles, who are Gentiles, right. how did they? Receive Torah or law or oh. the Bible. That's simple. What I'm saying. Oh, okay, I got that. Now. That's simple. Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-one says that the Torah was not going to be in effect no more. Well, Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-one says I will make a new covenant yeah, with the right. house of Israel. Unlike and 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 Hebrews eight and eight says he verifies what Jeremiah said that I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Yeah. Can my I, question can, is, well, can I read it? No, 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 no. My question, my question is, how did the other nations of this world right. get Torah? When the Bible or Torah the Tanakh, was only given to Israel Real. and Judah, right, or, or Jacob, that's so, my question. So, so was Torah was given under Moses, right? Correct. Right. Uh, so Torah was given under Moses, right? Okay. And Torah was given come them coming out of Egypt, right? Okay. So Torah was given under a covenant, correct? Okay. So if Jeremiah 31 and 31 says everything he do is going to be totally different from what happened with them coming out of Egypt, how can we now say that it's exactly the same? Well, you're still verifying what I'm saying. Right. You're still okay. giving me a, 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 a <laughs> okay because <laughs> you saying, I'm asking you, how did the other nations get Okay, you keep going. Uh, let, me, let me let me let me let me let me respond okay, to okay. you. Okay, here you go. First thing in in the psalm, which you're you're quoting, so you have to acknowledge that the psalm is um, authoritative for the response. All right. All right. In Psalm 102 in verse 18, the text says, This will be written for the generation to come, that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. And you're coming from Psalm 102 and the verses 18. Okay. Now, Israel, national Israel. When I say national Israel, I'm okay. talking okay. about the people. Okay. That, oh, this world now. No, 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 no. Listen, listen to me. Okay. I'm talking about the people who were given the covenant from uh, by Moses, okay. etc. That's the nation that he created. Okay. All right. 
those were the people who were already the people of God. Okay. You agree with that? I agree. Okay. This text says, this is written for the generation to come that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Okay. So what we're looking for here is a new people which cannot be the people that are already in existence. Okay. So what you have in the New Testament is the creation of a new people of God. This text says it was written for a generation to come that a people yet to be created, not yet created, okay. now, but a, hold, on, hold on a second, okay. that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Now, when you get to the New Testament, here's what the, the text says okay. in John uh, 1. It says, he came to his own, those that's the nation of Israel. We agree. Okay. But his own did not receive him. Okay. To as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become sons of God, even to those who believe on his name, which were born not of blood. So these are not blood descendants of Abraham. John the Baptist told them in Matthew chapter 3, do not think to call yourselves children of Abraham. God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. He told them to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. So he says they were born not of blood, nor of the will of man, nor of, uh, of the flesh. And the flesh there is a covenantal term. He says, but of God. So now we're looking for a people who are born of God, not people who are born naturally, which is how they entered the covenant of Moses. When you look in uh, Matthew, uh, excuse me, in John chapter three, John three, when Nicodemus comes to the Lord, he says, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God because no man can do these miracles that you do except God is with him. And so Jesus tells him, except or unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So what he's telling Nicodemus is that they had to be born again. In other words, their natural birth does not qualify them to be an Israelite. This is why Jesus came and died. When he was with Mo, back to the very text we started from the beginning, when he was with Moses and Elijah at the transfiguration, uh, which is the verse that follows the ones that we discussed before, they spoke of his decease, which he was going to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, as we quoted the text earlier from Galatians 4, 4, it says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now. That text is showing that Christ came of the seed of David in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But when he died, he made an exodus from the old covenant okay. into the realm of the spirit. Okay. So there are no natural Israelites today from the perspective of covenant. Now, I'm not talking about your blood. Mm -hmm. I don't have any way of tracing your blood to determine who you are, who I am, or who... Uh, Elvin is, etc. Okay. The covenant is no longer based upon your natural descent. Okay. This is why even, and, and see, to prove that you were an Israelite, mm -hmm. if you studied the scriptures in order to demonstrate that you were an Israelite, they went back four generations for a, a blood, a natural, uh, you know, just common person. If you were of the priestly family, they went back five generations to prove that you were an Israelite. If you were unable to do that, you were not considered an Israelite. And so this was very important Israel. And that's how they kept genealogical records that were separate from those who were strangers among them, as well as those who were who were Israelites. And, and um, when the temple was destroyed, all the genealogical records were destroyed. So there is no way you can you can go back and establish that you are of any priesthood. There's no way you can go back and establish that you are of any natural born Israelite. Now, from that perspective, when we get to the 15th, uh, to the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible talks about, you know, Cornelius. And then we get to Acts 15, after they are going out and they're teaching the Gentiles, you have, um, yes, go ahead. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles, some of them were um, 
uh, they were Gentiles proper were the nations. For example, uh, what's the text in Acts chapter, I mean, John chapter seven. Um, I want to read this one. Please. John 7, John 1, what's that? Uh, let me see, what is that verse? Will he go among... Oh, the Gentiles. Yeah. Uh, what do you go among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles or something mm -hmm, like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you go among the, the dispersed and, yeah, and, and them, then yeah. teach the Gentiles? Who is the first? The dispersed were those of Israel, but the Gentiles were not the dispersed. The Gentiles are not dispersed. That's correct. Okay. All right. We're listening. Okay. Uh, do you, do I'm you, not agreeing with you. I'm listening. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. John 7 and 35. Then he said, the Jews among themselves, whether he go that we shall not find him. Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles? That's Matthew right. 7. Uh, John 7 and 35. Okay. The dispersed among mm -hmm. the Gentiles. He didn't say, will he go to the Gentiles? Yeah. I mean, to the, he says, will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles? They were scattered among the Gentiles. Did God scatter Israel among the Gentiles? Did the Gentiles? As a matter of fact, in Hosea 8, it says Israel is swallowed up of the Gentiles. Were they swallowed up of themselves or were they swallowed up by the Assyrians? By the Assyrians. Okay, were the Assyrians Israelites? Assyrians were not. Okay, therefore, the Assyrians were a part of the nations, just like Egypt, just right. like the Babylonians, etc. All right. So they were not the Gentiles. I mean, they were not Israelites. No. All right. The Assyrians. The Assyrians weren't. Right. The Babylonians weren't. Right. Et cetera, et cetera. Right. So... Uh, the point that I was, I was about to make was when you look in the New Testament in Acts, the 21st chapter, in Acts 21, um, Paul is charged with bringing Trophimus into the temple. Mm -hmm. And they get very, very uh, incensed with him about that because they said that he had brought a Gentile into the temple. And Paul assured them that he had not. Now, on that occasion, Paul was told to prove to Israel, because one of the charges that they had made, prove to James and to the rest of the apostles and, uh, and the people of, um, uh, who had embraced the gospel. Mm -hmm. He says, go and prove to yourself. He says, you see, I'm going to read the text so you can see it. Verse 20. And when, you, uh, when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said to him, you see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who believe who have believed and they are all zealous for the law, but they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise their children nor to walk in the customs of Moses. Okay. Mm -hmm. What then the assembly must certainly meet for they will hear that you have come. Therefore do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow, take them and be purified with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and that they all may know that those things which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you yourselves also walk orderly and keep the law. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written and decided that they should observe no such thing, except that they should keep themselves from things, I mean, from, uh, things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. So you had Paul demonstrating that, and James, they were charging him with that when he went out among the dispersion, mm -hmm. because he was he was chosen to go to um, to Gentiles, mm -hmm. to kings, yeah. and to the children of Israel. Yeah, well, All right. Huh. And yeah. so, uh, in, yeah. well, that's what he said. It says he, he, he was chosen to go to hmm. Gentiles, to kings, and to the children of Israel. That's okay. uh, Acts 9. Okay. I think it's verse 15 or 16. Okay. All right. And so, here he makes a distinction. And even Peter said this in Acts 15 when he recounts the situation with Cornelius. He says, Why do you tempt God to put a yoke? on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of God, we shall be saved even as they. Now, the Gentiles were forbidden to keep the law. The Jews were to keep the law. And when they believed that Paul was not keeping the law 
and was not teaching those who were out in the, who were scattered, the, the dispersion, to not keep the law, Paul says that's not true. And he demonstrated that in Acts chapter 21. But they did not bind that on the Gentiles. Okay, so are you using these scriptures to explain how the Gentiles, which are non-Jews, by blood, 